Welcome to Saturday Night Live at 5 with Pastor Kwame and Community of Good Neighbors. If you are seeing this, of course, obviously I am not live. <laughs> I am actually recording this uh, just a couple of hours before we actually have Saturday Night Live at 5. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I double booked myself. So about a year ago, one of my really great friends, Vima, who is a part of the LSTC community, who happens to be the director of diversity at LSTC, asked me to participate in the International Association of Women Ministers conference. Now, usually the conference is in some international locale, but of course, COVID. So she'd asked me if I'd participate and do something with it. And I said, sure, of course. Fast forward to last week <laughs> when Vima reminded me um, and then asked me if I could still participate. And as I looked at the schedule, I realized it was going to be at five o'clock today, the same time as I usually do. And then with you all with Saturday Night Live at five. So the best thing to do <laughs> would be to record and to still share the message with you as we come to the end of another week. So I hope this message finds you however you view it, whenever you view it. I hope this message finds you well, resting, caring for yourself, and continuing to be vigilant because this pandemic has not let up. We still have to wear our mask, wash our hands, practice social distancing, caring for our neighbors, and getting vaccinated. So for those of you all who don't know me, know me or have, are seeing this broadcast for the first time, I am Pastor Kwame Pitts. I am the pastor of Community of Good Neighbors here in downtown Buffalo. Greetings and blessings to you. Saturday Night Live at 5 is a time of devotion and prayer. Um, usually we do have music, and it usually comes before these recordings or my live broadcast. But my wonderful director of, of all things music, Billy Brandau, is probably on his way to California right now for some much needed rest and relaxation. So um, please share, please listen to after this recording. I should have said before, but maybe perhaps after this recording, find your favorite record, your favorite tune, pull up Spotify, iTunes, etc. Find something that's inspirational and meditative for you and play it after watching this video. So <laughs> um, just a couple of things of interest. So we are, are finally in our space. We are at 1092 Main Street downtown buffalo right next door to holy trinity lutheran church our wonderful partners in ministry who have sh who are sharing the sacred space of the building called 1092 called cgn and all the other things that are inside the building um we have office hours please check out our facebook page next week we're having a soft open house and what do i mean by that by that i mean i'm inviting folks to just stop by to say hello I'm, starting, I'm inviting folks to come by and see the space. However, we don't have much. <laughs> so you'll be able to at least see where we do things like our mobile food pantry, um, where our receptionist and uh, welcoming area will be, uh, where my office will be, where the CGN worship space will be, where the meditative space for the Oasis community will be, all those things. Just stop by and say hi. I think next week will be a beautiful week. I'll be there most of next week, except for Fridays, which is my Sabbath. Um, I'd love to see you. Um, we'll be posting hours every day about when we'll be around. Wednesday will be a little tricky because we will, of course, be out and out doing mobile food pantry. But if you'd like to volunteer to come by and put bags together, you're more than welcome to come by Wednesday morning and join us uh, at 8.30 a.m. When we come by, we put 40 to 50 bags together, and then we go out to 3 Dote Street to share ourselves with the community, with our siblings on the east side of Buffalo. Now, let's take a moment and breathe and be. It's the end of a week. So many things are happening in the beginning of a new month, the winding down of summer, the preparations for everything back to school, and maybe preparations for you getting back to a rather regular rhythm of work. I know I definitely am beginning to feel sort of that excitement and a little bit of a strain um, because of getting back into a regular rhythm. This also means tomorrow, Sunday, is when I usually preach. 
But the congregation that I used to serve, Crossroads Lutheran Church, has gone through their service of holy closure. And so therefore, tomorrow really will be a Sabbath day for me. So I have a prayer for you for today. Oh, you of wounded spirits, I offer a place of rest. Walk among my mountains and climb to Eagle's Nest. Come swim my oceans or feel my desert's fire. Sit beside running waters to reclaim your heart's desire. Seek my silent forest or walk my open plains. Travel the deepest jungles till you hear my love's refrain. I am always waiting to allow each child to heal, to cradle the wounded spirits and teach them how to feel. I am the earth mother who loves without regret, tending all my children who, who through tears have paid all debts. Amen and Ache. And how very perfect really for today because of the topic that I will be talking about as I help close out the end of the conference that I have, I'm, going, I'm attending or in the process of attending. Um, I'm talking about women in ministry, women in theological thought, women who are doing all of the things, who are working towards change through resistance and ritual um, transformation for true liberation. So that is definitely a timely poem. And I may actually share that with them later. So in looking at, looking at, I looked at the, I, I kind of actually didn't really look at anything this week because I wasn't preaching, I'm not preaching tomorrow. But I did come across this, this context about the gospel that's going to be presented tomorrow. We're still in the gospel of John in chapter six. And the next couple of Sundays really are talking about bread, bread of life, bread of hope, um, all these things. And so one of my very dear friends, Priscilla Paris Austin, offered her commentary on this particular gospel. And I want to read the question that she presents. What are the stories that are nourishing your spirit, your family, and your community? The reason why I offer this question because... It's very interesting what it says in this gospel where Jesus says these things. Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the sign, but you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the Creator has set its seal. Where have we heard this about working for food without cost or without price? We've heard this in the Old Testament, and I believe it was in Isaiah, where it says, come, and in fact, Isaiah, the third rendition of Isaiah, I forget what it's called. It's been so long, and no, I won't say this. <laughs> it's been so long since seminary, but I remember studying the different sections of Isaiah, and I believe it's either Isaiah 51 or 55, but don't quote me on that where he says, come, you without any money, come get food that does not cost anything. Come eat your fill without having to cost, without the giving up your soul, your spirit. This food that will heal you. Why do you strive to eat food that leaves you hungry? And so that's the question. Like, where are those stories? where we have not maybe physically, but spiritually, emotionally, mentally cared and fed someone at no cost for them. Where have we stood in the gap and been able to care for someone, to touch that space that is hurting, that is empty, and filled it with good things, with our love, with our time, with our attention, with our advocacy? I'm thinking is primarily, especially about this, as we do the work that we're called to do as the CGN's mobile food pantry. It's amazing how feeding people becomes really complicated really quick. One of the things that one of our partners, Feed More Western New York, um, is a big, huge food depository. It's the same as the Greater Chicago Land Food Depository from Chicago, from where I'm from. And to be a part of it and to be able to have those resources is 
really, really timely and it's really, really vital and it's really important because normally shopping each week becomes extremely exhausting for myself and my built-in helpers, i.e. my family, <laughs> which I won't have too much longer come the fall as my son starts Buffalo State. My husband goes back to his PhD program at UB. But every Tuesday we would all go shopping unless a church or a community or an individual actually did the shopping for us. We go shopping. That's two, three carts at Aldi's or at Walmart's very easily. And as much as we put on the shelves, it would come right back off because doing 40 and 50 bags and going out on a Wednesday was exhausting. It was more exhausting because of the road that we had to travel. That we went from Holy Trinity pick up the van, going out to Grace Lutheran, where temporarily where we had been, then going to Three Dope Street, bringing, bringing the van back to, to Holy Trinity and coming home. Now, we are in one place. I can, we can drive up to CGN, go in the back where the food pantry is, and start putting everything together. And that is phenomenal. But one of the things is most uh, food depositories or food banks do have rules. And one of the rules is the fact that we as a food pantry are supposed to be a supplemental to maybe perhaps other programs like EBT. That it's not just us feeding our siblings in faith and in love and in hope but it should be the whole system, but the system is broken. And a lot of people also think and feel guilty about just giving money or dropping off food and have expressed the same frustration about what else can we do. And we're not giving handouts as many people are led to believe when it comes to food pantries. And this is why in the stories that I have been told and the, where I've heard the gospel very clearly from those that I am serving, we who claim to follow Christ do a very horrible job at feeding people, both physically and spiritually. Because we may give them food, but we ignore what's going on. We ignore their humanity. We belittle them. We look down on them. Every week, I get a visit from Miss Maggie, who always sings some gospel hymn whatever touches her heart. She tells me her entire life story, everything that is going on, the people that she's in community with, the people in her family. And she always offers a smile. And clearly this is where God is speaking through her. Even in those days where I feel exhausted and tired and wonder if I'm doing enough, even when I've had the experience of giving out 50 bags of groceries, literally in 40 minutes. And I feel horrible because I know there are other people out there hurting, needing things. Even when that last person comes and all I can give them a bag and maybe they have a family of four. It's always Miss Maggie singing that sort of brightens my day. And it drives me to do more. Whereas I may be able to take care of all their problems and very clearly, it does take a village to care for each one of us. And in return, we care for one another because that's what the beloved community is about. But it also fills me spiritually that I can do this work. And in turn, I try to make sure that I'm connecting with folks, that I'm talking with people, that I'm asking how they're doing, reminding them that we're out there every Wednesday, no cost, no price. We're hoping as a faith community that we will be able to reach more people. And it's not, I think one of the things that I've also clearly heard from the people, and I think I've said this before, one of the things I've clearly also heard from the people that I'm serving is the fact that they, there's this assumption that churches say, well, if you're going to come take this food, then you need to come to church because obviously your life is screwed up. I think this pandemic has proven very well that there's a breakdown in the system, there's a breakdown in regulation, there's a breakdown from the powers that be that really don't care about the people that they're serving. 
there are food des deserts and there's food disparity and it is rampant and open. We, as people in this nation, have a really bad problem about lambasting and talking down about other our other global siblings, but we do a horrible job at taking care of our own. And so when times get really tough and really awkward and we struggle, we have to remember that the Creator stands in all of this and Jesus is also standing with us, reminding us that in order for us to do the work that we are called to do, to follow our destiny, to our purpose in life, that we have to come to the table and be fed with the bread of life. We are forgiven and then we are called and sent out to do that work. That's what all this means. So I continue to ask you for prayers as Community Good Neighbors grows and grows. I'm really excited and thankful for the response from a lot of people who are engaging with us through social media, through the website, through phone calls, through texts, that they believe in the work that we're doing. And it's gonna take a minute, but it's a labor of love. Feeding and sharing of ourselves is a labor of love. And at the end of the day, we can come home or go to that place of comfort and sit down with bread and wine or bread and juice or however Whatever comfort food fills us is there we find the comfort in the one who loves us regardless. Amen. I want to leave you all with a benediction that I found. And I think it is very timely for today. A story is told that our ancestors in faith ate manna in the desert. That God provided for their needs one day at a time. May we go forth in the gritty trust shown by our ancestors. May we relish how it feels to be cared and to care for. That we might become ancestors to a world where people are not caught in the grind, but move from glory to glory, from rest to play, from too much or not enough to everlasting abundance. On behalf of Community of Good Neighbors, I am Pastor Kwame Pitts. Thank you so much for joining me for Saturday Night Live at 5. Next week, I will actually be live. <laughs> I will be live. So thank you so much for joining us um, and blessings to you in this waning of the end of another week. Please be well. Care for yourself. Care for one another. Look out for one another. And by all means, God's peace.